Hello YouTube, Mayel here. Um, I'm not too sure again how to call this video. I'm not sure of the title. Possibly it is a rant. A rant. Me just venting. Um, but quite frankly, it expresses a little bit of how I'm feeling what's going on through my head and which is very simple maybe you can um, identify with what I'm going to say I don't know but I just really really felt strongly about getting it out there and saying it and right now I feel like a headless chicken. I feel like I'm running around. Like a crazy person. Like I am a headless, headless chicken. My world is slowly crashing around me. You see, not long ago I've lost my beloved grandmother. That was about a couple of months ago and I'm still grieving. And then a couple of months before that, that's when I discovered that my husband of 21 years is a narcissist, a sociopath, and I'll even go as far as saying he's a psychopath. And because of that, I am grieving for the loss of my own innocence. I am grieving for the, for the illusion I once had. Since discovering my husband's pathology, I have been cramming my head with information on this problem, on this issue, on this matter. YouTube, Amazon, Wikipedia have now become my best friends. For many years now, because of the incredible things uh, that my husband has done um, the poor decision making skills the crazy making the nonsensical actions especially because he's a man of a certain age you know he's only seven years older than I am huh? And because of the position he holds within his company, I could never make sense of his choices. So for, for a very long time now, in my head, I've been referring to him as a highly functioning fool. Well, little did I know how right I was, but at the same time, how, how wrong I was. But now that I know the truth, I have to find help. I have... I'm sorry, if you hear this noise, I took notes on my old computer and... It makes noise because it just does. I, it will eventually quite quiet down and uh, and I'm sorry it's not too disturbing but now that I know the truth I have to find help and I need to talk myself out I need to talk it all, talk it all out I have I have to express myself and get it all out I need to document what's been happening to me. 
I need to document what's been happening behind closed doors and the facade of the good-looking couple that we are and the cute little family that people compliment all the time because behind those blue gray eyes lies the kind of a boogeyman that no mother thinks of warning their daughter against. Now that I know the truth of my situation, here, here are the choices, the only choices that I see in front of me. One, I can kill myself. Two, I can become a zombie by medicating myself with alcohol or pills. And that's a choice. That's a choice I can make. Three, ask him nicely how high he wants me to jump and stay in a relationship so I can stay in a relationship. Fourth, I can wait for him to leave me and wait for him to find um, his next uh, punching bag. Five, or I can prepare my exit as quietly as I can. And those options have been swirling around me for many months now. Well, I'm choosing to opt for option number five because I am too coward for option number one. And that depends on your own point of view. The other reason for not opting for number one is because there is still some hope somewhere deep inside of me that I can maybe manage to make myself, to make a new life for myself. There is that tiny little hope that it feels like a flicker, a tiny little flame, you know? that I can't help but hang on to it just like I can't help but hang on that just maybe just maybe just maybe I'm, I'm so wrong and I'm not gonna lose my kids you know they're gonna grow up and, and maybe just maybe just maybe they're not gonna become their like their father I, I know I'm deceiving myself, but I just can't help hoping and hanging on to that tiny little island of hope. But here is another truth I have to deal with. Now that I can no longer rationalize his crazy making, now that I know what he wants from me, now that I know what my future is going to look like for sure if I stay with him, I can no longer stay. And divorce is the only way out. But what's scary is that I don't even know how on earth I'm going to be able to afford a lawyer. And from 
everything that I have been able to hold to get my hands on books of people that have been there that have done that and that I have divorced those people there is almost no justice they get away with the law Most often they're not. They always win because they have no sense of. They don't play fair. And everything is up to grab. They don't function with the same rules that we do. And they are so good at what they do. They can even turn your own lawyer against you. They can get to a judge and make you look bad. It's hard enough convincing even people that you know of what's happening. Now I have to go and find somebody and pay money that I don't have to fight a battle for me that he might not even understand. And then I don't know if fighting, even going into that battle is even worthwhile for me because I'm going to go through so much, like so many people before me, probably get humiliated, dragged, slandered, and everything that goes with it, and then end up with a mounting debt to pay a lawyer because those people, it's not an in and out divorce type of thing. They drag it on purpose so that financially they bankrupt you financially financially and then after all of this for I don't know how many years I'm going to be faced with I will get nothing this is a man that I trusted and financially is ahead of me by so much. He can make it last. He can make that divorce last for as long as he wants. He has a salary. I don't. And from the little pieces of information I'm now starting to gather, they're saying I have to start keeping records. And no lawyer at this point that I have contacted or trying to get information out of has been able to give me a single decisive answer whether I should if I start to find a job right now or not because I know as soon as this is gonna come out on in the open he's gonna cut me off financially and uh, no lawyer the ones that I've spoken to so far, they say, oh, no, don't you worry. The judge know those kind of people. Oh, no, we all know what we're talking about. And, you know, don't you worry. We're not going to allow him to do that. There are laws for this and there are laws for that. And you don't have to worry. And that's what they're saying. But the people that have been through those fights with narcopaths, it's been a whole different 
reality. So I don't even know what to believe. I don't even know how to prepare myself. I've got no marketable skills. I've been with him since I've been 19. I've traveled back and forth, unable to stay long enough somewhere to to establish anything. And I've made the mistake of staying put and choosing to look after my children. I've got no diploma, I've got no job experience, I've got no friends, except my two neighbors. I've got no family. And I am in a faraway land. So yes, right now I feel like a headless chicken. My mind is all over the place. My mind goes through flashbacks constantly, always trying to connect the dots. Got to pull myself together, I keep saying, I keep saying to myself. But my mind is just too scattered. I've got to start selling my stuff, my children's stuff, so that when the time comes to leave the home, I thought was going to be our family sanctuary forever. When that time comes, I'll be ready to walk away with just a few books and a few clothes. I've got to pull myself together, I keep saying to myself. And yet all I want to do is sit around and wait for the UPS guy to come deliver the next book on narcissism. Pull yourself together, my mind is screaming at me. But deep inside, all I want to do is confess. The need to come here on YouTube and tell my side of the story is very, very, very strong. And it becomes even stronger when I realize that the smearing campaign, no, when I realize there's been a smearing campaign going on against me behind my back for years now. And even my own beloved daughter has been on it. So yes, I've got to pull myself together. I know I've got to pull myself together. But let me tell you my story first. Allow me to purge my soul before it comes back and fill my brains and heart with more crazy. This is what one of my neighbors said. She said, it's not because you feel bad that you should look bad, you know? And I cringed and I thought, oh, she's so right. But it's easier done. It's easier said than done, I think. Just like I know better than to feed myself a crap petarian diet diet. To feed myself a crap petarian diet when I need my physical strength and mental clarity the most. Here's another thing. 
I can no longer go to the gym because my wolf has started squeezing me financially in an effort to gain power and control over me. Not because I am a spender, not because I am a, you know, um, a reckless uh, uh, wife, but just to gain power and control over me. So I have to be careful of the money he so generously gives me. And despite knowing that I have to be careful, I can't help but want to make sure that I look, I look good when he comes home next. Which is completely stupid because he no longer touches me. But I suppose, deep down, wanting to look good is my way to retain a level of dignity in the face of his disdain, I guess. But right now, I feel too stressed to want to take the time to shave my body, manicure and paint my digits. It's lucky. <laughs> None of you can see. It's lucky. You can only see a small part of me on my videos. Because I am in need of major grooming. I've let things go too far. So far that I have to find a way to afford a trip to one of those salons. <laughs> Or salon, you know, those uh, grooming people. I fear for my future and for the loss of the life I've known for 24 years. There is so much to do. I'm frozen with fear and anxiety. Sometimes when I wake up and reality hits me, I know, it's not actually sometimes, it's most of the time. I feel like a loser. And I do feel like I just want to die. This experience I have to go through is forcing upon me a level of humility and helplessness I could never have imagined. And because of that, I'm reaching another level of understanding, of compassion and empathy for, pe for people who struggle. It's going to be even harder for me to not want to understand people when they go through tough time. It's going to be even harder for me to dismiss and judge harshly somebody who's going through a tough time because there is so much going on that what you see can't be all there is. Life will never be the same for me. I could never look at people the way I did before. I could never look at life <coughs> the way I did before. I can ne never, I can no longer subscribe to society's utopian belief system. We are all groomed to believe that 
we all reap what we sow. Society say, work hard and all will be, all will be well. Be fair and kind and God will reward you. Do unto others as you want done unto you. In The Secret, the law of attraction talks about positive thinking. Positive thinking, positive action attract positive things back to you. Here is another one I heard in a country song just recently. And the man sings, you can go wrong when you're doing right. Well, I sure don't know what happened to me because I lived and that is no exaggeration because I've been innocent, I've been naive and when you are like that there is a certain element of negative thinking that just is not part of your being. It just can't be. So yes, I've lived and breathed those beliefs effortlessly without even thinking, without even forcing myself. And yet, here am I, here I am, singing the blues and howling at the moon. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, and if you can't identify with me, I suppose you should really, truly count your blessings and count, consider yourself very, very lucky. But for now, I have to remember to hide everything. From the books I'm reading on narcissism and divorce, from clearing all the notes I take on my phone, on my voice recorder. I've got to remember to hide my old computer. I used to download, uh, I used to, uh, so I can download uh, videos on YouTube. I've got to remember to put all my passwords uh, in a safe place. I've got to remember to clear my Amazon account so um, so books title don't appear on anything just in case my daughter, for instance, wants to get log into the account or use my tablets. But my desk is messy. My bedroom is messy. So many things I've got to try to stay on top of when my emotions are just so chaotic, chaotic. I can sometimes even hear my brain sizzling like, like eggs on a frying pan, you know? That's what my brains feel like. It's mushy, it's grainy, it's sandy, it's hot, it's sizzled. It feels like sometimes there is smoke coming out of my ears and that's not out of anger, it's just, just too much. Too much. Too much. My body is crumbling and aging faster all of a sudden. My heart palpitates completely unprovoked most of the time. My stomach is always on the verge of getting rid of its content. In the middle of this tension, I have to prep my body and mind to resist the web of illusion my narcopath husband always conjures up. I have to remind myself that when I see him next, 
and if he smiles at me and if he wants to hold my hands instead of tensing I have to relax and go with the flow I have to find a way to outdo Meryl Strip because there is no no one that's going to shut to shout cut this is real life and this is survival 101 I've got to play dead to make matter worse I have to battle with myself inside my head because not confronting him directly and openly makes me feel like I am the oath breaker it makes me feel like I am the adul adulterer it makes me feel like I am the plotter and the villain and to make matter worse yes I'm plotting but what choice do I have? There is so much internal conflict that some days I just don't want to get out of bed. I feel frozen. It's a massive mental undertaking to remind myself of this very simple truth which is wanting a peaceful existence is a worthwhile goal to pursue thank you